big movies that like shaped us. It's kind of like sad to be in an era right now, like in the midst of COVID, like, damn, like, are these going to be around? And I think to your point, I think they will be. I think what's crazy is you have these movies that these directors, the the film crew, writers, studios spend so much time, you know, crafting, building, writing, pre-production, production, production, post-production for someone to like watch on their laptop at home and then watch and be like, oh, that was cool. Yeah. On to the next thing. It's Tom. It's Jake. You, you already, already know. know. It's pretty spot on. All right, ready? We are farmers. No, I'm just kidding. We are back for another. All right, ready? Bump, but um, bump, 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 bump. No, just roll into it. That was it. We're back for another quick take. For farmers. Tom and Jake. Um, today. I figure we're going to touch on the movies that made us. Yeah. I recently actually binged that series on Netflix. It's pretty good. It's uh, a good basically series. Basically, it just kind of dives into like, I mean, I'm a 90s kid, 91, shout out. And yeah, there's so many movies that like sculpted like my sensibilities as a filmmaker. And yeah. like, I mean, just, I feel like it'd be kind of cool for us to like share the movies that made us. And then obviously for anyone like watching or listening, like hearing y'all's movies like that kind of shaped you. And it's funny, like everyone's got like a different one, yeah. you know? So, yeah. um, well, we actually just watched mine the other day. Oh yeah. Funny, well, well, I, I haven't town him recently. Yeah. Cause it. we, we briefly touched on this before. Cause we're like, Oh, would this be a good podcast topic? And, it, and we're like, Oh, it would, I've never seen the one that you're going to talk about, mm. which I, I've always heard great things about I mean, it. I need to kinda, watch it. You got it, bro. I have to now. But we got to like, we low-key got to watch it together now because after you watched mine, me, you, and Tim at my house. Um, yeah. And, uh, well, here, I maybe guess, share what it is. So my the movie that like, for me, I think sculpted my career and future and really got me like, yo, I, I want to do this. Like, I can see myself doing this. This is what I want to do is Signs hmm. by M. Night. I just so vividly remember, and you, it's hard to say this for a lot of movies where you remember where you were, how you felt. You know what I mean? Like there's certain movies where like, oh, I've seen that, but you don't know like who you were with, where you saw it. You just know you saw it or like, and I just remember watching Signs and just vivid memories of uh, we were driving to California and we we're going to California Adventure. It was uh, my family and our good family friends. And we we're in the back of my you know family's Durango. Mm. And in the Durango, we had the headrest, oh, you know, the, the TVs <laughs> and the headrest, the classic. They don't make that anymore. They don't do that anymore. But they had, you know, the TVs and the it's headrest. Like airplane almost. Yeah. And my buddy Nick was, you know, in the seat next to me and, and we put on signs. And I had to have been, this is before they moved moved across the country. So I had to have been like, I don't know, 12, something like that. And I remember watching this movie, being terrified, driving at mm. night, uh, you know, at night to California. And it just left such a lasting impression on me, not only just for like the movie. I like it. That's my favorite genre is like thriller, hmm. horror, scary drama, just anything in that kind of dark, moodier realm. For sure. Yeah. And, but I think more so than just even the movie and the, the creepy tendencies and that just the master storytelling from M night in that movie is on the DVD. You know how DVDs um, back then had like behind the scenes, special bonus features, director's cuts, oh, like yeah, all yeah. that extra stuff. It, uh, it had his first monster movie that hmm. he made on there and he kind of interviews him and, oh, sick. and shows his, when he was a kid, his first mo- like little monster movie he made at his house growing up That's and tight. he would literally take a Halloween style monster mask, put it on an RC car and drive it around. Wow. And that was like his like monster. So he would like set the camera, the old film camera up on a tripod record and he'd be off and he would drive the monster into the shot. And then he'd cut to him like, ah, like, and like, but it just resonated with me. Cause that's like, that's what I was doing as a kid with For like, sure. literally with my friend who was in the car we made a monster movie. It's like 25 minutes long called, yeah. called Exedia. And it's literally like the old high, high like tape camera that my parents had. There was like, you know how you could do those like night special vision night vision modes and stuff. There was like a thermal mode. Dude, night vision mode hit. Hit. Yeah, yeah. Hit hard. But there was like a version of that that was like thermal and it gave all these crazy like colors. Predator vision. Yeah, dude. Predator, predator vision. And so I would yeah. like run around with the camera. <laughs> And like, that was like the POV of the monster, That's tight, dude. but it's like 25 minutes, like 
the guy shows up, there's a murder, the FBI shows up to the house, they run DNA tests. I'm like, I'm in it too acting. I'm like the cop trying to solve it. And I would have my brother film, my friend film, my mom film, my mom acted in it. And we made like a 25 minute monster movie. And then I just, so it's just like, it all kind of was just like, yo, like I, I can do this. I'd love to do this. And I don't know. It's so signs for me, I think just shaped yeah. me as a whole <laughs> and just inspired me to like, want to make videos, make movies, make films slash, you know, kind of go that whole route. I, love that, I was already doing it, but like, the, you know, I already ready was like making little videos and stuff. But I think that was just like, oh, this is what I want to do. I think I got to you know? touch on the high eight squad for a second. Yeah, like, please do. It's funny, like I, this is pre me even knowing like editing software. We had a family camcorder. My dad picked it up, I think at this store that was even, this is like even pre like big store. Like it was like a local camera store. It wasn't even like Best Buy or anything. Right. He got this little high, it was a Sony. And I remember he just got so he could like film soccer games and stuff. Right. And I just started messing around with it. I just thought it was so cool. And I didn't know that at one point you could import it, which I'd figure out later that you could right. like edit it in iMovie, which I did find out later. So I would do all the editing in the camera. Oh, I had to. And one of the first like murder movies I made with my brother is I filmed him and I remember like I didn't really know how to edit or cut. So I was like, I told him before I hit records, like, hey, I'm going to pan the camera. It's going to pan over here. And then when it pans back, you got to be on the ground dead. So like, it was like these things that had to happen <laughs> in real time. Right. And then like cut the record, then he'd move and I'd roll it again. He'd disappear. Like, right. it's just funny. Like, I don't know. Oh, if we messed up a, cause yeah, you couldn't. We had to rewind. So my way yeah, of showing yeah. like, hey mom, look what I made is I re would rewind the tape put it in her eye and then hit play and it would literally I'd have to edit the whole thing on the tape. Well you couldn't you couldn't edit, right? No, you I know. couldn't put that tape into a computer and I edit it. I just didn't it. know how at that time. Like well, I'm talking about I'm like seven yeah, years yeah. old. Yeah, so same you know? thing. Like if we did a take and you messed up or you didn't get yeah. it right, you literally had to be like, dang it. And you had to like literally go put it into play mode, rewind, rewind, okay, play. And then just before you know, like you messed up or whatever, stop. All right, boom, turn it back to record mode. All yeah. right, I, like that's, you had to do everything in Dude, camera. Dude, yeah, and, and some yeah. of my first movies were stop motion. And now I know obviously you would just use a DSLR, but actually this is even pre DSLR. Well, how old do we fucking sound right now? I know. Like, like thinking about it now, I'm like, Dude, we sound like old geezers. Like, oh, we had this tape and we had to rewind. Well, no, I think a lot of people can relate. Yeah, like, I don't yeah. think 90s is that far ago, but yeah, yeah maybe. I but feel, well, I just feel old. My first stop motion way. ones were, which we'll talk about. I want to touch you, on the movie that you inspired me. I'll, you showed me your stop so motion. This is, Bro, I don't even. Oh, man. When you first showed me that, because I had seen it before you had shown I made a bunch of stop motion. The dude. first ones what I was going to touch on is I had a lot of like Jurassic Park toys and Legos. <laughs> so literally the, the high eight camera, when you hit record, you know, like when you, you'll sometimes, if you work in film, you'll hear camera speed. It's like right. literally the camera has to like get up Catch to speed up. where it's actually rolling 24 times a second. I think the same thing applies. These mini DVs. I remember I'd hit record and I'd hear my camera go and like, it would take a second. And so doing stop motion, I'd do that. I'd have to wait a couple of seconds, then cut it. So like my stop motion oh, was wow. literally me having to like, wait. you were doing it with tape. Yeah. Oh wow. And then, yeah, I would just have to like speed up the footage later or oh, whatever. My gosh. But no, it's just funny. Like it's funny. Like those movies. Cause for me, like Jurassic park was kind of that movie when I was a kid that like just completely changed everything. Right. I mean, that movie came out in the nineties and I must've been like five or six when like we got the VHS tape from Blockbuster. Dude, that movie scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Like when he gets snabbed off the toilet by the T-Rex, oh, nightmares, nightmares. Like yeah. I, I couldn't sleep. And I remember having just, yeah, brutal nightmares about like a T-Rex eating me off of See, like I, a roof, roof being torn off and a T-Rex reaching in and like See, the grabbing one me that or really something. got me is the Raptors. Yeah. the T-Rex, I was always in, the, in my head, I'm like, all right, well, did you fucking hear the T-Rex? And they're like, they got no arms. The Raptors <laughs> were like so cunning. That, yeah, those are the yeah. ones that scared me. Well, no, they definitely scared me too. I just, yeah. I just for sure remember like- But that was the like the idea. era where, I'm sure everyone can relate. Like, I don't right. want to go on too much of a tangent of being a kid, but like where you literally, I had the- the, the, the little jeeps and the action and you'd watch yeah. the movie and kind of recreate it so that was like one of those movies too that i think when we rented it, it like you said had some of the behind the scene featurettes right maybe dvd had just come out and there was so much uh, behind the scenes on that dvd from like steven spielberg and seeing the dolly track and i didn't yeah. know what any of this is but that was the same era where i'm looking at my hi8 footage i'm like why does mine not look as good as that and i had no concept that they're shooting on panavision and i'm shooting on like a 500 camcorder but like I, that was like when i I really started to like put it together like ah oh, so they have a 
they have these lights and these dollies. Like that's when the it, the first light bulb right. popped up. You know right. what I mean? So, so was that? So that was the first light bulb moment for you. But you brought up another movie before. So right? later on, I saw this movie probably when I was in high school. When I was very much like I loved film. I was taking like little video multimedia classes in high school. But there was this movie I saw. It was called Memento. Yeah. And that one was like Christopher. the first time where like, you know, sure, you can have nostalgia and say Star Wars was something that inspired you. I think everyone can relate to those like, you know, Star Wars, Jurassic Park. But Memento was like the first, I wouldn't say art film, but it was definitely like very high level where it was like, because I mean, the whole movie is backwards. It's a guy who has short term memory and like they literally play the movie inverted. Yeah. And on a first viewing, it's frustrating. I don't, what the fuck am I watching? Right. But it is such like a, I, dude, it's so brilliant. Yeah, I don't know how I still haven't watched that because I'm obviously countless times people are like said, memento, memento. You want to hear something crazy? I, I don't even if know if you know this. There's a, so there's a guy has short term memory and he's tattooed his whole body yeah, yeah. of clues because he's trying to figure out who murdered his wife. Right. So if I, I, he knows he's going to forget in a few moments. So, so he's he always, tell me something. Yeah. And one of the things he finds out in the movie is there's this guy named Sammy Jenkins who he knows is involved. So before he loses his short term, he tattoos, remember Sammy Jenkins. And like that movie is going to sound dorky. I literally have that tattooed. Remember oh, Sammy no Jenkins. Way. That wow. was like one of the first I tats I got. That. I was like, cause I was like, dude, this fucking movie. I know it sounds dorky, but That's I just crazy. had to like, kind of like show some love to Memento. And That's like, tight. Yeah. Tat. I never knew that. What's the one to one on the front of your hand say then? Oh, uh, this one is, I mean, also kind of movie related. When you watch MGM and you get the little line, it goes, yeah. <laughs> it literally right above the MGM logo, it's like, it says that, Ars Gratis Artis gotcha. or whatever. It's yeah, like yeah. A Latin for yeah, art, yeah. for the sake of art. Yeah. I, I thought that was like kind of cool. Like, don't make it art for money. Make art just because it's, it's fun, you know? So, That's so. but yeah, that movie yeah, for sure that. like shook things up because I was like right in high school, starting to apply for colleges. I was like, dude, I want to make movies. Yeah, like that, I still you know? need to watch that. And I, funny enough like dude dude his brain is wired differently because he's like, always made movies about time Chris yeah because like if you think about like i remember when i watched inception i was i i remember i was a senior in high school and i remember out. yeah i remember i think I'd, i was a freshman in college i remember walking out of the theater going literally i said i can't i don't even remember who i watched it with or whatever but i just remember thinking like how did somebody write that? Oh, I know. That's literally the thought. And what I said, I was like, how did it's someone so many levels. write that? Yeah. And I was like, how did I, it just, I was, it put me in this place of like, dude, I don't, where do you even begin with something? Like trying to make something like that. I know. How did a human write that? Yeah, I just, I just remember being blown away by that. But yeah, Christopher Nolan's crazy. Another, Probably one of my favorites. You know what's so funny too? As I really started to finally get like a computer to edit all this height footage and eventually would get like a DSLR and stuff like it's funny how like movies really inspire you in the yeah. sense of like, I remember when I was first making those movies with my brothers and neighbors, anytime I saw a movie and I loved the soundtrack, it's funny how that soundtrack worked its way. I would just download it off of iTunes or LimeWire. Like yeah. some of the, like oh, you said, you Lime made Wire. like, yeah, shout out. Or Napster, dude. We actually, wow. funny enough, side tangent on that, got like a, a message from our internet provider because I was like using Napster and the wow. internet was like, yo, you better stop this. Wow. But anyway, so I, one of the movies that I, Loved the soundtrack too. Was you have ever seen Ridley Scott's Gladiator? Yeah, yeah, dude, that movie's so. I don't great. remember the soundtrack, but yeah, I I don't. God, I'm gonna probably sound like an idiot because I don't know who it is, but it's definitely not John Williams. It Hans? might be, or I think it is. is it is Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer. But there's so dude, much. He's just the go. Any like classic movie soundtrack that you like name like that well, you Han can Inception, pretty much the, safely duh. you could pretty much safely say like Hans Zimmer yeah. and probably nine out of ten times be right like yeah. he's just no always. but that so that is Hans Zimmer but like literally I was able to get that soundtrack and like even just in the little like you know I made these short films in my backyard like me and my brother like fighting we would yeah just use that music right. it was funny because the music I didn't have the cameras that those filmmakers were using but if I had the music that those filmmakers could. were using I was like oh it kind of brings it to that level yeah. you know so I think uh another one for me that kind of in that same vein but just talking about like a movie that like inspired me or us or um is for me like The Strangers mm that was, I want to say when I was in high school, 2008 when it came out, I think. And I was a senior in high school and that going into college and going into film school was like, I want to make movies kind of like this, the thriller, horror, scary. Like, I just love that kind of thing. And I, what I truly loved about that and what I've always tried to take into any of the movies that 
I want to do or ideas that I want to do moving forward is like that the use and actually paranormal activity did a really good job at this mm. is using like the absence of like music and startling sounds. Interesting. Um, because if you watch the strangers, the very first one, there's so many moments where there's not music or sounds telling you how to feel or that something's coming or like someone pops out and it's a jump scare. Like there's so many moments where characters in frame standing or walking and it's just the dead silent ambiance of the cabin fire crackling. And you just see the evil, you know, the bad person just walk into the frame into the shadows. And normally a movie would be like building up, yeah, or, yeah. you know, or you have a little stinger or whatever. And it was just silent. Yeah. And you're just like, Oh fuck. And your hair standing up. And it just happened all throughout no, the movie. I remember that. And in the trailer, when she's like on the phone, I think you just, it's like, honestly, even if your TV settings were really dark, you might even miss it. Yeah. It's just, he's like, Oh, she's background. standing in the kitchen. Yeah. I and think, yeah. And you just see this guy walks, stand yep. and look and, and just stand. walk away. Yeah, I think, it's, or, so that one for me was like really, you know, kind of inspired me on the, the way that like I, I guess my taste in movies and what I, I was like, I love that. And then paranormal activity, the very first one did a really good job of that too. Just like be like, you're watching the security cameras and be like, just this low, like low end Hmm. rumble, like the, just whether it's like air conditioning, whatever. And, but speaking on that, the strangers, like then, I mean, it obviously inspired me enough to like, want to go make a short like fan film um, yeah, yeah. you know we've and made then, two of them and then we've made two of them since and that first one that we made we just went up to my cabin we made the first we did like three short films in two days or something like yeah, that yeah. and we shot the strangers fan film literally like your tattoo says art for the sake of art there was no purpose in it outside of like yo let's just go make a short film that was so cool yeah. it was just like all of our friends just like mobbed up to a cabin and like. so d miranda d played the the strangers guy miranda played the girl i had my mu- vintage mustang at the time shot at the cabin all in that one night and then we did the the kill scene morning but it was this idea i had for like how the girl the origin became, story became you know, like an origin story so i called it strangers origins wrote it and it was just like a fun little short film to like pay homage to the film fan film but also create like a little origin story and put it out and crazy enough i mean you know this story about the the guy that actually hit me up about it so for you guys that don't know you know we put out the short film and uh I want to say a couple months later, some, it wasn't right away. It was just months later. I get an email from, you know, a guy, um, and said, Hey, saw the stranger short film. Uh, I produced the original film. I absolutely love this. And that Damn. was it. It was just like, just wanted to Is that like, how that hey, combo like, started with, yeah, with but I, I, I just remember going like, just not even giving it a second thought being like, Oh, okay. Like, yeah, the producer of the original films emailing me right now just to tell me he oh, liked yeah. my Didn't short film. Did you actually film. go over to your poster? So I have the movie poster, obviously, because it inspired me. I love the film. I have the movie poster in my f- movie room. And so I was just like, let me go see. And so I looked at his name, Roy Lee, walked over across the house to my movie room, looked at the movie poster. At the bottom, Roy Lee, Vertigo Entertainment. His email was Roy Lee, Vertigo Entertainment, Los Angeles. Yeah, I was yeah. like, no shit. And so I emailed him back, which is like, oh, uh, you know, yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Da, 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 da. And we actually started conversations. And when I was, he asked if I had any original ideas. And I met him down in his office in LA. And, you know, we had a long conversation about, hey, do you have any original ideas? Like, if you get me, you know, a short film that's an original idea and it's scary, it shows me you can do the job, I can get you a major budget film. And wow. nothing has transpired from that, but, you know, that door is still there. And it, that's the other thing we've talked about. Like, it's just like, not deviating from what we're doing now because what we're doing now is working, but like, I don't want that opportunity to go to waste. Yeah. But it's what's just crazy about that whole situation is a film that inspired me, led me to make a short about that that film, which led to like, could be one of the biggest opportunities of my life if I ever somehow cash in on that. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, but that film was made for just because we just wanted to make it want to make something yeah. fun go make a short film and so that was a really good time but then we made a short the second one just like a one it was like oh let's do this at, you know at the eclectic west as a one and then we made a second one and but yeah like the it was sick dude it's really good if you go look at the comments on youtube of that first one people are like yo this is like well we kind of looks did the like same, the original yeah movie. i think we kind of 
to the best of our ability, reverse engineered like the gels they were using yeah. for the lights. So we went and picked up some gels to like make sodium the vapor. sodium vapor kind yeah. of look. And I think we even, as Miranda, the female talent, is walking to the car. We kind of did that same thing where there's just Shadow. a little person there. But bro, we did that on no budget. I was just pulling my own focus. You were pulling your own focus. You were doing the lighting, going over the camera. I'm directing. We had like one PA to Worth help. saying too, like, it's like the coldest night ever. Freezing. December and December in the, yeah, or in the woods. In Arizona and December. Northern AZ in the woods, December, we were freezing. I had like three jackets on. It was brutal. Um, but yeah, bro, I watched that. I still went and watched that the other day. I was like, this looks good. And it's like scary. Like yeah. if I, you know, it's hard when you're like making a scary film, it doesn't feel scary. Even when you're editing, it doesn't feel scary because you know what's going to happen. You've seen it. It doesn't, it, there's just, there's a disconnect because you're just so numb to everything. You yeah, yeah. wrote it, you've seen it, you shot it, you know it's fake, this, you know it's got to everything. But, um, you know, other people are like, bro, this is scary as hell. So yeah. um, it's still, yeah, it's it's good. I'm proud of that one for, you know, what we did on no budget. But anyways, yeah, that's to say, like, I think those two films definitely, for me, have There's like one movie, inspired. I don't know if you've seen it. I saw it, so it's funny, because like these movies that have kind of like, very much inspired or informed me as like kind of over a span of time, right? Like when I was a kid, I was watching Star Wars and Jurassic Park. And like, as I got older, it like was Memento when I was in high school. There was a movie I saw right when I got out of college. Like I was probably like 26. Well, no, I was actually probably like right in the midst of me going to Chapman. I remember my buddies like, his finger's always been kind of on the pulse of like, hey, like there's this cool Q&A over at this theater with this yeah. film. Had never heard of the filmmaker, never heard of the film. It was at Arclight oh, Hollywood. Let me, let me try and guess. Is it Damien Chazelle? Or no? Oh, okay. No, yeah. Right. Go ahead. That would have been cool though. Uh -huh. um, I just figured so, because he was like younger. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Anyways, so keep going. the movie, my buddy invited me. To, we went to this premiere at Arclight, which unfortunately did close in Hollywood. Yeah, that's crazy. One of the best theaters ever. And the movie was called Spring Breakers. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I think I had heard of it. I was like, oh, what is this going to be? Just like a Harold and Kumar, like, oh, spring break. Like I had no idea. It's like, dude, it, that movie's like an art film. Like really? it's really, really cool. That's Friday. the one with Franco, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when we went there, I, you know, sat down packed theater. And like I said, I'd never really heard of the filmmaker, but I remember he came up, he, the, you know, they gave him the mic. They're like, hey, before you watch it, you know, do you want to say anything to the audience? And he literally said like one sentence. He goes, hey, don't try to like dissect the plot and follow this character arc. Just let the movie flow through you. And then he sat down the lights when I was like, oh shit, that's kind of a cool intro. Because wow. then you watch the movie and like a lot of movies, right? Like if you watch even like, I mentioned Hangover earlier, like you could like literally follow the arc of a character and like, okay, at this act, like literally there's characters that just completely disappear within like 20 minutes of the movie. And like, that would bother me if I didn't know just to like let it all happen. Right. But like, that's another movie that Cliff Martinez is the composer, beautiful music, slow motion. Dude, it's a Crazy. beautiful I have to film. go watch it now. Yeah. Cause I, I've never Like from a surface level, it's just like, oh, it's just it. people who go fuck shit up on spring break. But it's a really, dude, shot on 16 millimeter by this guy named like Benoit Debbie. Like he literally pulled his own focus they would literally wow. just like roll whole takes and like improv a bunch of stuff so like coming out of film school where like all your film friends are just like watching like oh tarantino this and that it was kind of cool to like go see a movie from a filmmaker i'd never heard of from a movie that wasn't even that commercially successful but like i remember like watching him like oh this is so cool wow. and like got a lot of inspiration from it for sure so i'm gonna have to peep it then because obviously i know about the movie but I've never yeah. seen it and i've never a lot heard of people it. will probably listen to my dude that movie sucks like i think if you watch it with the intention of like yo it's like an art film and like definitely seeing it in like a big screen helps too. Right, there's right. times like I will love a movie and recommend it to somebody. And then if you just watch it like on an iPad or on an airplane, it's oh, like, it sucks. Like yeah, you kind of yeah. need that experience. experience. You know, that's why I don't think theaters will ever die. Yeah. Uh, and you t look at it now, like Netflix and a lot of these streaming platforms are like struggling and their revenues have dropped and all this oh, stuff. For real? Oh yeah. It's been big news. Netflix's stock has like plummeted because their earnings report that came out was like not very good. And really? like, yeah. And so oh, I didn't know that. And, but there's, you know, there's been all these talks about theaters dead, movies are dead, AMC, you know, with AMC stock and no one's going to movies anymore. And it's like, that's just not the case. People, yeah. people want to go to the movies. For like, sure. I think movies in some capacity will be like theme parks where you just go to a theme park yeah. to ride a cool roller coaster. Like, bro, and you go to a movie, you experience doom. How many or, times have you been to Disneyland? Right? Yeah. Like, it's like you, you're not going to stop going there. You're going to yeah. go there for an experience to enjoy. You're not going to go by yourself. Right. A lot mm -hmm. of movies are an experience with friends a night out a date night or yeah. whatever like you want to experience these things talk about sure. the things after the movie's over bro this and that and like so it's like i just don't 
see that I mean, going away. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's actually very fitting to kind of close out this episode is talk about yeah. like maybe the future of movies. Because like in a way, like those big movies that like shaped us, it's kind of like sad to be in an era right now, like in the midst of COVID, like, damn, like, are these going to be around? And I think to your point, I think they will be. I think 100%. what's crazy is you have these movies that these directors, the, the film crew, writers, studios spend so much time, you know, crafting, building, writing, pre-production, production, post-production post for someone to like watch on their laptop at home and then watch and be like, oh, that was cool. Yeah. On to the next thing. It's like, dude, like I know. what? And so you have, you're going to- That gonna, would be like- if you were a musician and you had like the orchestra and this instrument and like it just acoustically is perfect and someone's using those like literally 99 cents iPod uh, yeah. headphones, it's like, that's not the way to listen to right. it. It's like kind of, I'm sure for the filmmaker watching it on an iPad that the screen brightness is zero, there's <laughs> other stuff going on in your room. Yeah. It's like, that's why I think movies, they kind of demand your attention. Cause when you go into a theater, like, especially like when you go to see like a Regal movie, right. there's an intro bumper that's like, yo, turn off your phone. It's like, they're right. like kind of letting you know, like, don't don't do all that stuff. We're at yeah, home. Exactly. There's so many distractions. So much oh, yeah. cooking Chanel, dinner, or you know, it's like my wife Chanel can't watch a movie. She's on her phone the whole time because she just likes to like listen. And there's distractions See, and yeah. stuff. But like when we go to the theater, she's not because it's like there's no distractions there. And you have to you paid money to go sit and watch this thing. You're not gonna be distracted. Can I tell by you else. a movie going experience that drove me absolutely insane. What? God, this was so frustrating. <laughs> there was- I don't um, even know where this is going to go. Oh yeah, no. So we're, I was in this little theater in Los Feliz, very small, like pretty intimate theater. And I think it's really called like the Los Feliz Vintage. And what's that guy from The Office who dates Pam? What's his name? John Krasinski? Jim, jo <laughs> yeah, Jim, John Krasinski. What's a, oh, Quiet Place. He oh did, yeah, yeah. So was this the second one? First one. Gotcha. Amazing. Literally, there's moments in Quiet Place, like you're talking about with strangers, that are so silent. Oh, yeah, And yeah. I literally they hear this guy going, texting, da ding 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 And literally, people in the theater are like, yo, shut the fuck up. And I literally saw an usher, like, take the guy out of the theater. But, no like, way. for the first 30 minutes, I mean, that's, like, goes to show you, like, movies kind of demand, like, to right. not be yeah, have yeah. that going on. But yeah, I just yeah. remember being like, dude, you fucking ruined in this movie for that's me. That's crazy. You know? um, but, yeah, no, that. that's wild, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's a good good way to close it out. I know we were gonna keep this one short, and we can dive into more in the future if if this is a, a good topic to just go into. Um, but I'd love to hear fun. like everyone that else's like kind of yeah. What's movies. your what's your guys' favorite movies and why? Comment below. Very curious. We we both have different ones. Yeah. Than each other, everyone's got different ones that inspire them. But yeah, that's kind of uh definitely the movies that have shaped our you know kind of careers you know our eyes our tastes you know and, and just whatnot so yeah in a lot of ways it's kind of like um it's like whatever someone's movie is you can kind of, it kind of like speaks to yeah like yeah. if someone's like oh yeah my favorite movies are marvel movies you're like oh okay i kind of know who that kind of person right. is. not that there's anything wrong right. with that or if right. like, oh my favorite movies are like French so what does New it Wave. say about me that like i like these like dark ass horror thriller movies i mean you might be a serial killer in the making it might be Jeez, wow but yeah let us know either on uh probably youtube's a good place to just get feedback yeah. i don't know yeah. if like you'd leave a review letting us know your favorite movie no on no no, app, so. no but do leave us a review on apple podcast if you are enjoying the podcast it really does help we would appreciate it greatly we want to keep making podcasts for you guys and yeah you know, obviously the more love you can show us it just and, helps uh, keep things flowing this so. would be a fun quiz so we are actually shooting this on youtube with three different cameras oh yeah yeah so there okay. is, without even kind of giving it away with our eye lines, there's a camera that's shooting you. That's a red helium. There's a camera, or I'm not saying that that is a camera, but there's three cameras, a helium, uh, a Komodo, and a C70. Yeah. So if you're watching this, can you tell which angle is which? Yeah, we did that intentionally. So we're shooting this podcast episode with a red Komodo, a Canon C70, and a red helium 8K. All three different cameras. We thought it'd be fun at the end of the episode to let you guys know that and now guys could go back or just even right now try and decipher pixel which peep. pixel peep oh, and the decide highlights are this must be the canon what camera I mean, is I which i think you'd be impressed they all look so let's similar. do this let's do this a wait wait b c okay so now you go and you say which camera you think so, is a which camera wait, you wait, think a is would b be my angle yeah yeah a so, is me a is you b is the wide B is the wide and C. C is, is the yours. me. Okay. So go let us know which one you think is the Canon C70, the red Komodo, the red helium. And if you're listening, right obviously, you got to go check it out. Yeah, you got to so, go check it out. Because obviously, so. if you're listening, you're like, what am I, <laughs> yeah. what am I looking at? <laughs> yeah, it's on. we're talking about the YouTube yeah. version. So well, cool. Yeah, that wraps up this quick take. Thank you so much. And we'll see you on the next one.
Thank you.